Hey, and welcome back <clears throat> to this video. All right, so you're going to have to <clears throat> forgive me. My voice is apparently no longer working. So, so far in this series of torque and angular acceleration, we've done two problems. We've done a cylinder that had a rope wrapped around it and the mass attached to it. Then we went back and we also did another a pulley, which was a solid cylinder with two masses attached. And we did that. And so now we will actually look at a cylinder that's free to roll down a hill. And you'll notice one of the big things here. I, was, I did write the word, it's no slip. There's no slipping in this. So there's a friction present between the object and it is not sliding. It is rolling down this uh, plane. Some people would say pure roll. But anyway, so there is the problem that we're given in this case. And so again, this object is actually rolling down the plane. So that means we've got some angular velocity as it rolls. And you should be noticing something. I've drawn this circle huge compared to the ones I did before. And I've got a reason for that. Because once again, when we look at this object, notice what I'm doing. What's the first thing I taught you how to do? The very first thing we learned how to do was to look at things on beams. Well, if you understand that, we're just continuing that same line of, you know, thinking. So check it out. So in the center, so in the center, just like every other problem I've done so far, I'm going to start by drawing my MG that is straight down. So there's my MG. And then I'm also going to say that there is a normal force acting at 90 degrees. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> both those are present on the center as well. But here's something that we're not looked at. Where's the friction at? So the frictional force is actually occurring down here on the edge of the cylinder. So let's go in. And so that frictional force is going to be parallel with the plane. So there is my frictional force going up the plane. Now, I'm going to kind of clean this picture up a little just for the purpose of a free body over here. Because when we look at a free body <coughs> for X's and Y's, we don't really care about where they're at. This only has to do with torques. So let's go ahead and do something. We've got an mg, and it's at some angle of theta <clears throat> that we've got in this problem. We have also got a normal force at 90 degrees to the plane, and we've also got a friction now. You've drawn pictures like this a hundred times. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and let's do our sum of the forces on this problem. So our sum of the forces X would be equal to mg. Now, it's this component that's actually making it move. So we'll say mg sine of theta minus our frictional force. And that's equal to, now this is going to be different. In the last two problems that we actually worked on, <clears throat> I can't get my mouse to work, our sums of the forces were always zero for the rotating object. But here's the deal. In the other two problems, they were fixed pulleys, so the center of mass never actually moved. So in this problem, it's actually rolling. This object is moving down the plane. So in this case, we've actually got... And MA in terms of our sum of the forces X and our sum of the forces Y will just be N minus MG cosine of theta and that's equal to zero. Okay, so there we've kind of got that taken care of. So if you've learned anything so far, these problems are pretty repetitive. You start off with your sums of the forces, and then you always go back and you start working on the sum of the torques. Now, 
in the last problem, so let's go ahead. Sum of the torch, and that's going to be equal to I alpha. So what's providing a torque? Well, we can see here that this uh, force, this frictional force, is going to be providing a torque in the problem in here. Now, you may be looking at this saying, oh, wait a second, the mg is also providing a torque. And you're right, the mg does have an angle in there. That's true. But what would be the radius for mg? Well, its radius is zero, so that's why there's no torque due to that. So the only thing providing a torque in this problem is this friction. Now, we're going to just kind of say, let me, let me go with like a different color here because I don't want to pollute my screen. Let's just say that this object has a radius of r. We didn't say at the beginning, but let's go with that now. And so let's see if we can kind of continue our work in this problem. I'm sorry, my throat's been all messed up for the duration of this video. All right, so the only torque I have is due to this friction. So remember, what is a torque? A torque is a force times a distance or a radius. Front, Our pivot point is in the middle. So I'm going to come back and say that F R is equal to I alpha. Well, let's let's just slide it here and break that down more. F R would also be equal to I is, well, let's see, this is a solid object, right? So one half, it's the most ugly one half I've ever written. Let's try that again. Let's go for epically awesome one half. Nope, that's the number two. So, Let's just go back to one half then. <laughs> one half m r square, since this is a cylinder. Uh, if this was a hoop, in other words, if this object, all the mass was on the outside, so the only difference is we would work it, we would just write m r square instead of one half m r square. Uh, once again, we know that a is equal to r alpha. So that means that A over R is our alpha. And just like all the other problems, R square, R's cancel. And so look at what we're left with. So we're left with F is equal to one half of MA. Now that's pretty interesting. So let's see if we can't solve this problem for A maybe. So let's scroll down a little bit, and we could go ahead, and let's just go ahead and do something. Let's take that equation, and we'll just substitute it straight back into there at this point. So how about this? Mg, my writing utensil, has suddenly gotten much larger. Sine theta minus one-half m a is equal to and technically both these should be big m a since that was the notation i'm using i'm going to fix my font a little bit here so mg sine of theta is equal to m a plus one half m a and so we end up with mg, and yes, I know the m's cancel. I'm just too lazy to stop writing them right now. Call me a try hard. Three halves ma, our m's cancel. So we've got two thirds g sine of theta is equal to a. And again, a very common question that goes with a problem like this would come back up and say, what if you used a cylinder? And the only difference is if we used a cylinder is, again, this one half would have never have showed up. And my battery's running low, so that's where this video is going to end. So anyway, I hope this helps and gets you started a little further on your path. We'll see you later.